Namaste. The Puranic legend of the goddess talks about what happens every 12 years. See, goddess time is different from earth time. <laughs> so every 12 years, she has her menses, she has her period. And in Vedic culture, the rule is that when a woman's on her period, she can't enter the temple. So the goddess goes actually out of the temple into a small shack and is cared for in a very simple way while the entire temple is renovated. Now, I have a little bit of a different theory on this. The time when this occurs is when Jupiter is crossing over the star Aldebaran. And this is well known in astrology as a time of war. Aldebaran is the eye of the bull of the sign of Taurus. And, you know, bulls are notoriously territorial, and, uh, you know, you don't want to be caught cutting through their pasture <laughs> if they don't know you. Uh, you're liable to get tossed. <laughs> so, uh, in order to counteract the tendency uh, worldwide for people to quarrel over territory, which, you know, you can see going on in the news every night all over the world, to counteract this and to keep peace in society, this device is used by the goddess to increase her service tremendously. Because when the whole temple is renovated, then afterwards, all the deities and everything have to be reinstalled. And I mean, there's such a tremendous amount of work going on. And you'll see in a few minutes as we take a walkabout and show the construction and renovation that's going on here. So, you see, this is the intelligence of Vedic culture. Vedic culture is actually beyond human intelligence. And the reason I say that is that these uh, legends and Puranic stories, such as the one I just related, are there to regulate the human society and to keep peace and prosperity in the human society, to avoid the breakdowns due to internal conflict, uh, such as we're seeing in America and in Europe and really everywhere, uh, where there's a tremendous amount of competition in society as to who is going to be in control of our territory. Huh? Of course, the whole idea of our territory is Maya. <laughs> you didn't make it. How can you say it's yours? You know, if it breaks, you can't fix it. How can you say it's yours? You know, there is no such thing as a country, a nation, or any of that nonsense. It's politics only. It's the competition for power only that leads madmen to draw a line on a map and say, this is our side, and that's your side. And we're willing to fight and die and kill you to maintain that line. I said, this is such nonsense. Who are we, you know, to try to designate countries and stuff? Anyway, people are mad. And to counteract this madness due to desire, there's so many regulations and customs that were instituted by the ancients in the Vedic society that help to keep the society stable and have nice conditions so that everyone can enjoy spiritual advancement and reach to ultimate enlightenment. So come with me now while we take a walk around and look at all the stuff going on in the temple. Here's an aerial view of the temple and property with the temple area outlined in white. But the temple property is actually much larger, covering many, many acres 
going back from the highway towards the beach. In the residential area, there are many cottages and beautiful forested lanes, which you will see later on in our video tour. From the front gate of the temple, let's cross the street and go inside. Oh, look out for the motorcycle. Inside, there's a statue of Hanuman, maybe three or four meters high. He's welcoming us to the goddess's temple. Jai Hanumanji. Now looking back toward the main gate, we're going to pan across Hanuman and take a look at the whole temple building. It's quite extensive and there are many shrines within, which you'll get to see as we go through our tour. Here's the whole thing. And as you can hear, there are always beautiful prayers and bhajans playing in the background, creating an atmosphere of spirituality and devotion. This is the Param Guru Temple of Sri Chandrasekhar Indra Saraswati Mahaperiyavar. And here we are panning across the temple courtyard. There's a nice truck that we'll get a good look at later to the mandapam in the background. And here's the gate leading to the residence and the lake area. So another pan showing the mandapam and this really cool truck. <laughs> done up in the finest South Indian style. And finally, we come around and get a look at the front of the temple. Very beautiful. This is in front of the mandapam. Piles of wood ready for the major sacrifices that are planned at the temple reopening in just a few days from now. It also supplies the mandapam kitchen, which feeds the staff. Here's a view of the Singhamukhi temple. Singhamukhi is the female form of the lion-headed goddess. And right next door is the new Shiva temple, which is under construction, but should be ready in time for the new festivals. Next to it are all the images of the gods waiting for their shrines to be completed so they can be moved back in and worship properly. Meanwhile, inside the temple, work is proceeding at a feverish pace, double shifts every day until it's done, <laughs> because it has to be done on time astrologically. Plus, Many guests have been invited from all over Sri Lanka and even India to come and help with the installation ceremonies. So this is really a major project. Everything is being polished, painted, cleaned, redone, and made ready for the grand ceremonies which begin on September 10th. The fellow with the white shirt is the temple manager. And just check out the work that's going on. These scaffolds are at least five meters high. And they take the workers all the way up to the roof for dealing with the castings of the decorations of different lotus flowers and goddesses and stuff like that. Repainting everything is also a major concern. After putting the white base coat 
it's getting a black cover coat and then there'll be gold gilt applied to all these ornaments just like you see here in the temporary goddess altar but then in the cottage itself is the main deity the goddess Kamakshi and she is being served while she is awaiting the new temple or the revamped temple installation series the work goes on morning noon and night it has to be done on time because the astrological calculations are quite precise now looking around at the temple neighborhood this is my street my cottage is down there oh about halfway to the horizon and so you can see the kind of atmosphere that's created in the residential area there are beautiful wide lanes shaded with fruit and flower trees lined with comfortable but plain cottages and plenty of open areas. And not only that, there are a lot of gardens and these paths leading back into the woods going to unlimited flower gardens with millions of flowers. Now, this is the garage where the Rathiatra cart is stored and then when it's taken out it moves down the wide lane and behind us but if we pan further to the right we see the kind of streets that are all over this property so you can actually walk for miles and miles without ever leaving the temple land this is the bathing ghat at the lake Sarovar. And this is a pilgrimage place, and during festivals it will be full. And across the lake, the chariot of the sun god. And he is just waiting for all the pilgrims to come. Everywhere you go on the property, there are these symbols like this Aum. And there are also many statues of demigods and saintly persons like Shankaracharya. Here's another view of the beautiful lanes in the back of the temple. Can you tell I love living here? <laughs> There's Shankaracharya. And that's the lane leading back to the temple. The temple employs many skilled horticulturalists who know how to trim and nurture the trees so that they grow and give ample shade, fruit, and flowers. <laughs> 